Okay, welcome everyone to another week of the Experimental Math Seminar. This week we have Jakob Malinowski, who's going to talk to us about hitting a prime in 2.43 dice rolls on average, and then if there's time, a double feature on round robin tournaments. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to give a talk. It's a pleasure to give a talk. It's even so it's online, but it's very nice. So I will present the first part, the hitting a prime in the 2.43 dice rolls on average. So it's a joint work with Noga alone. Um, so outline, it's, I will present this puzzle and then uh, some numerical results and then a uh, dynamic programming solution and then how we bound the reminder. I only will open the stopper but I will save the time. Uh, now the puzzle, generally the puzzle was published in 2017 in the bulletin of mathematical statistics by contributing editor Anir Bandas Gupta. And the puzzle says the following, you have uh, X1, X2, independent and so on, uniform uh, random variables, uniform on the integers one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's dice, outcomes of dice. And uh, by observing the sum, a par partial sum of X's, you're waiting until first time you hit a set of prime numbers. So for example, if uh, you can hit in three cases from six already in the first time. And now a uh, contributing editor was interested in the characteristic of the uh, stopping time tau. So it's first time when we, when partial sum, uh, sum hit a set of prime numbers. And he uh, presented a uh, lower bound, lower bound for the expected time, and lower bound was uh, 2.34. And, and also wrote that the uh, heuristic approximation, it's about 7.6 times un until hitting. He also wrote that ge in, generally, in general, uh, it's not known if variance is, uh, of hitting time is finite or not. So the interesting future here is that uh, uh, it was kind of, because it was no uh, lower bound, I will show how to find it. It's very fast, it's very simple, but it was a little bit surprising, 7.6 since already this probability half, you stop it first time. So in the beginning, in this time, so when I saw this puzzle, I performed a simulation, simple Monte Carlo simulation using computer, and, uh, and here it's number of repetitions between 1 million to 10 millions. And we, in this Monte Carlo simulations, outcomes is uh, about 2.43 for the mean, and variance was finite uh, about 6.3. And here also in last column, it's a maximum hitting time among certain number of uh, repetition simu uh, Monte Carlo simulations. Ah, I forgot to say, if you have some questions, please ask. It's even better in the middle. The now, and it was, so even in the about uh, more than a million simulations, our maximum uh, hitting time was about 70, 60, 70. So, and then, but solution, it was not clear, but recently in the correspondence with Noga alone, it's come out the more or less closed form solution. And solution is based on the dynamic programming algorithm, which uh, I can present here. And then, uh, and this dynamic programming algorithm going to allow us to calculate until some certain point, and then we're going to bound the error, so that error uh, going to be low than one over 10,000. In fact, even less. In fact, even less, but uh, abound, they're not tough, tight, not tight. So uh, to present it, uh, let's first uh, show how we calculate expectation and variance. So uh, remember, a tau is discrete hitting time, obtained value one, two, three, so on. Therefore, uh, expectation of tau, it simple, can be calculated by this formula when probability kind of, of survival time of a uh, KMO. And second moment, expectation tau square can be 
calculated by this formula. Now, uh, uh, approximation which was presented in the bulletin of mathematical statistics. Remember, in the beginning, uh, approximation a lower bound was 2.34. This approximation is based on first, first 10 items. So it was based on first 10, 10 case. So it's it, when you took the first 10 case, K, K1, 2, 3, until 10, you can easily obtain lower bound. And this calculation can be done very fast. Now, now what we did, uh, we calculated all these probabilities by dynamic pro programming until certain level, and the rest we obtained up, upper bound. So how it was done, I will see it, uh, show it here, computations. So let's denote by PKN, PKN, a probability that sum of X is equals to N and N is not prime in all partial sums, all partial sums up to, up to, up to K also uh, not, not primes. Now, now if we summarize, summarize here, across all possible values of n, we obtain that in times in times up to time k included, it's no prime. It means that stopping time, if we summarize, it means that stopping time uh, at least at, k, at the point k plus one. So therefore, uh, probability that tau more equals k plus one, it's exactly sum of all possible values of n here. Now, and this probability PKN, we calculate using uh, dynamic programming by simple way. So by definition, remember uh, N, it's not, pr not prime. And all, now if we going back, going, oops, if, so dynamic programming going to work in this way. First we fix K until which level we can go, we cannot go to infinity. And then for each small k up to k in n between k and 6k, we calculate by two steps. So in first steps, in first step, when uh, k equals to one, it's trivial, it's straightforward that p11, p14, and p16, it's one over six. And when each follow pkn, we calculate simple by law of total probability by conditioning on the, on the last uh, on last outcome and and it's it means it across all possible values of phi when you have the uh, x1 to xk and total equals n minus i such that n minus i it's not prime um why is p of 1116 it, it's that you throw one die yes because uniform distribution so uh, remember a definition of PKN. It's it means p p one equals to six, and six not prime. In six, it's not it should be not prime. Therefore, probability in one uh, die to get six, it's one over six. Correct. Uh, I'm a little confused. But Do you mean it should you... equal it should equal one p one one should be the the first row is one, not six. No, in first outcome. Uh, see, when, when k equals to 1, k equals to 1, you have only x1, correct? And you say it could be 2, 3, or 5. No, but uh, according to definition, n, it's non-prime, non -prime, correct? Oh, it's non-prime, okay. Non-prime. So ah. let's, let's go, maybe I'm a little bit fast. Maybe I'm a little bit fast. No, no, non-prime. So, it has to be f 1 or 4. So there are two possibilities. So non non prime non prime it's can it's can be o, o one or four or six or four yes or four correct yes. because because see uh, maybe I need to go back so uh, here here this probability probability is a tau more equals k plus one it means that you don't stop at time one you don't stop at time two and until time k therefore all these. Should be non primes up to up to up and until time k. Okay, therefore uh, this is non prime. Now, now by dynamic programming we can calculate 
all such probabilities. And then, and then we can calculate expectation, uh, first k terms and expectation, and rest we can figure out how to bound. So it means now if we take um, if we take uh, expectation of tau as a sum of first k terms plus reminder, the same we can do with the variance. And then by fixing, for example, fixing uh, k capital K equals by thousand, we calculate first thousand terms in expectation. So it means lower bound. And this lower bound it now equals 2.42. Point 0.8, and for variance, it's equal 6.242. Uh, and then now what remains to show that we bound the rest of the terms, we can bound by some quantity which is below one over 10,000. It's okay? This is, so this is all elementary. You're not using anything, anything deep about the prime numbers here. Uh, no, no, now we're going to use theorem, uh, prime number theorem to ba for bounding, for bounding. Now we're going okay. to use, okay. yeah, exactly. Everything is simple. And now we're going to use prime number theorem. Yes, yeah, so far it's only numerics. The, only the numerics. The is coming up, I guess. Yes, yes. So now, now we're going to use the prime, prime number theorem. So how to buy bound reminders. So now, in the proposition that we have, it's following. Uh, first of all, for every k and every non prime n, uh, pkn, remember pkn is probability that first sum of first k xs equals to n such that n is non prime in all previous is also non prime, can be bounded by this quantity when pi n is number of prime prime smaller than n. Now, now to prove this proposition, to prove this proposition, we can prove by induction. Simple, we can prove this proposition by induction. And the proof is working in this way. So again, for the uh, k, for the k equals to one, is straightforward. And now assuming that it's correct for k minus one, we, Working in this way. Suppose there is a Q primes in the set n minus six up to n minus one. Therefore, a number of primes which is uh, less than n minus i always more than, more than equals the number of primes in the set uh, uh, until n minus Q because it's Q prime numbers in the set n minus six up to n minus one, then i i can be between one to six. And now using uh, induction step, simple using induction step in this inequality, we, we prove the proposition. First of all, we, uh, according to dynamic pro uh, programming step of law of total probability, we have this equation. Uh, now, uh, now using now using the induction step, we obtain this equation and using inequality, we obtain this equation. And now because, because, because uh, uh, <laughs> uh, six minus Q over six always less or equals five over six to power Q, we finish the proof. Now, now using this uh, proposition, uh, we can obtain the upper bound of PKN using a uh, prime number theorem, which states that for every n about 1,000, uh, number of primes up to below n, it's at least 0 0.9 times n over ln of n. And now, so using prime number theorem, we immediately obtain uh, upper bound as a corollary upper bound for the PKN in this upper bound. For now in this 0 0.9, it's with a room, with a large room. 
Now, now how we bound reminder? We, now this color uh, color we simply use to bound reminder in the expectation in the in the variance. Now how we are doing it? Now, our, remember R thousand uh, expression for the probability the tau moiety of k plus one. It's exactly this formula, and now R thousand its probability is tau more equals in k when k more than thousand. Now, according to definition, this is exactly this double sum, and now using last corollary, we simply bound pkn by this quantity, which is if we rewrite the sum in different order, we obtain this quantity. And now, now because here it's k starting with maximum, we again obtain upper bound simple by plugging uh, mark, uh, uh, sub by south by south. And we coming to upper bounds is as a such function, as function of n for n at least south. And now we simple bound. Now what we're going to do, we're going to work with this function. Now, by observing this function, we see that this function has a maximum value at the point uh, at the point uh, 1049. And we need to go from south, but we need to start from the south. Therefore, what we're doing, we bought up to first 50 values, we bought we bound by maximum point, and others. Values with simple bound by rectangulars, rectangulars using this particular inequality. And when we simple obtain this upper bound, this quantity, which is bounded by, by, by 7 times 10 to power minus 8, it's, it's much smaller even than uh, 1 over 10,000. Some questions, if you have some questions, I can answer. Yeah, I have a comment. Probably yes. if you do this beautiful argument, but uh, you can probably make it even better, smaller error by going further and having more precise inequality. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, of course. We 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 can, but we because it was so fast, also so small in this way, yes. We 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 didn't uh, we didn't play with it. Yeah, but it is pretty good already. Okay. Thank you. Now about variance, uh, it's very similar. We bound again a thousand terms, a thousand terms. But here we arrive to the, again we're using the color with prime number theory. But here we arrive a little bit more complicated function. But again we're playing this function, observing that its function has max uh, uh, has maximum. Uh, uh, so observe, observing when when obtained it's a it's a function. What we're doing, we exactly calculate the function for first nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine values, and then we simply bound this far upper side by sum of rectangulars such that observing that maximum obtained at the first value when n equals ten thousand. But here, the outcome. It's little bit uh, upper bound, little bit less. It's one over ten thousand, and so by these steps, we finish in to in common er maximum error that we obtain. It's one over ten thousand. It's but it's a drone, uh, as a drone mentioned, possible to play with it to obtain more tight upper bound. Some questions. It's, it's first part. So first part, uh, it seems like time is loving. So I finished with first let part. Me make, uh, let me make a comment. Yes. This is really beautiful, beautiful analysis. But uh, using a real dynamical program recursion, uh, I figured it out. The probability that you will exceed 1,000 runs is tiny. It's less than 10 to the minus 40, much, much smaller that you will be still alive tomorrow. So from a practical point of view, 
if you do the estimate for a thousand, uh, you get, uh, so the error is not realistic. Uh, it's probably a very good, but it's beautiful analysis to get a rigorous. But from a practical point of view, you don't need it because probability that you survive after a thousand terms, and you can even go 10,000, then you can make the probability less than 10 to the minus 200. So it's really, but it's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoy very much by doing all these steps. Yes. The, the argument that you put the, the bound on the sum on the error term, that didn't require anything about the primes other than knowing their density, right? Yes, 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 no. It's the simple bound by rectangular, by, 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 uh, by, by rectangulars, and uh, no, 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 only I'll observe, no. Only, only what it was required uh, in the, the first step to bound this probability. After we bound this probability, and here, of course, used used prime number theorem, then it's all. So you could do this with a different sequence if you knew some asymptotics for those sequences and for their counting functions. If 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 you have such sequence, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Okay, another comment: you don't need the full prime number theorem. Before prime number theorem, Chebyshev and later Sylvester uh, got almost estimates like this. So in this case, you can also use. Uh, uh, previous relevance, not the full prime number theory, but only the Trebuchet type that is a little bit weaker. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. I will look on it. I think I, I saw it in the uh, in the current book, uh, Robin's book, uh, Trebuchet original one, but I need to look on it. Yeah, but then it was improved. It was a spot in the 19th century before the prime number theory to get this constant better and better. And Sebitev had not so good, but Sylvester improved it to, I think, roughly 0 0.9. So, mm -hmm. Thank you for anyway, coming. Yeah. yeah, actually, there's an interesting paper by Diamond and McCurley that shows how you can uh, take Chebyshev's idea and push it further uh, if you know an actual partial sum of the Mobius mu function. So they basically show that if the prime number theorem is true, that that thing will eventually get you a bound closer and closer to one. Thank you. By, by whom the paper? By, by Diamond, uh, by Harold Diamond and Kevin McCurley. Uh, it's an old paper, probably 30, I think it's in the Illinois Journal of Math. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So if uh, it's no more comments, I can switch to the second part. Is it okay? Yeah, Sounds go ahead. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so maybe I stop share and again, share screen. I need to find, oops, only second. I try to switch it to different file. Can you see it? Yes, looks good. Thank you. So it's different topic. It was generally done a done, uh, little bit earlier than the first presented one. And it's about the, I only can see, but about unique maximum score in round home tournaments with N players. Generally, we wrote with the, Professor Moon in our first paper, and he mentioned me this problem. And then after some, some time in some investigation and asking the references, we come out to the solution. And I will explain, uh, present the crowd of the problem and shortly we'll talk about the solution. I only will look on the time, everything is working. Okay, okay, so, uh, the ground of a problem, it was a, of a problem was presented in the book by Richard Arnold Epstein, The Theory of Gambling in Statistical Logic in 1967. So what Epstein presented there, 
he presented in chapter nine round robin regular round robin tournaments with n player, and he proved uh, no he and he claimed without the proof that when n is large, probability that there is a unique winner is one. Now it was curious to see how to prove such results that probability to get unique win winner is one. And uh, so if I'm going back to remind a uh, classical round uh, Robin tournaments, so we have N players and in let's denote by X, XIJ equals one or zero according if a player I, I wins or losses the game this against player J. And always XIJ plus XJI equals to one. So it's, and we assume that uh, that all uh, probability that the player I wins this of player J, it's half. So it's classical model, and uh, and we assume so we and we have generally we have n choose two pairs, x i j x j one. So and if we denote by s i the score of player i, it means it's, this is a sum across all possible values of j for play which play uh, player i plays this. Now, generally, maybe it's not perfect notation because SI also depends on N, but in, in many times in literature, it's used SI and also Epstein use, I think, use SI, so we, we keep it SI. Now, uh, generally, um, so our original work was we interested in extreme distribution, distribution, distribution of extremes, but now, Little bit different problem related to uniqueness of maximum score. In general, if we're able to obtain all possible score vectors in various distribution, we can kind of enumerate uh, distrib uh, probability to have unique maximum for the different values of n. The problem of enumeration is mostly impossible, uh, even for the values of n, it's eight and eight. It's already, already we have uh, two to power uh, eight uh, two to power eight choose two combine a uh, possible score vector. So it's uh, no way to calculate such. But generally, uh, after uh, looking on the web and looking uh, uh, searching for the results, we we found that uh, McMahon already knew. Uh, 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 wrote a paper in 1923 when he calculated a distribution of all possible score vectors using generating functions. An idea is simple by if uh, S1 to Sn is score sequence of tournament, and we're looking on generating function Gn, which is product across i less than j between 1 to n, ai plus ij, by expanding this quantity, we obtain a distribution. Uh, we, we obtain all possible uh, uh, <laughs> uh, ordered score sequences. For example, if n equals to three, and we expand for g function g n, we see that we have a, a score one one one. It's it's power one, one, one occurs twice in score zero, one, two occurs six times. Now, now this process, it can be done uh, forever since uh, this calculation became tedious, but what happened, uh, Epstein in his book reported values of Rn, which is probability of unique maximum score in the tournaments with n players, when assuming, of course, the two to power n choose two uh, tournaments equally likely. Now, in values where R4 0 0.5, R5 0 0.56, R6 0 0.627, and so on. He didn't explain how he calculated these values, but he in the 
In the same chapter nine, he gave a reference to David in statistical journal Biometrica, and David uh, generally calculated all possible score vectors in their distribution in the uniform under such uniform assumption and in to tournaments until n equals eight. And the, so these numbers were taken simple from the table possible to refer from the uh, access from the table of uh, David, but it seems like only on this number R8, uh, Epstein did mistake and calculated not precisely a correct value should be 0596. Now, in the web letter, by trying to solve a problem, and after we saw and looking for a possible uh, what, what it was done in literature, we found the drone has a, a mapper program which calculated all possible uh, score vectors in various distribution up to n equals 50. So we used the wrong data. So I don't know maple, but let me interrupt. I, there was in the IS. I put it in the 15 values in the OIS. There was a motivation to to ex extend the number in the OIS before they only had McMahon's. Yes, a yes. Value. So I saw it. So I I don't know maple, but what only I able was to do is to execute. Uh, so I took a MAPL from university program without knowledge of MAPL, I executed the wrong program. But when what we obtained, we obtained all possible score vectors and very distribution, but it's for already n equals nine or 10, it's, it's a number, it's so large that, and because no knowledge to use the MAPL, I, I moved I uh, asking uh, some uh, person to uh, uh, I generally to move it to the MATLAB. And then in MATLAB, I simply calculated uh, by simple counting probability of the unique maximum score. So if to, ah, in for n equals nine, uh, outcome even can be in inferred from the McMahon data in his paper. Of, now, in here, what is presented here, it, it, it for a different n, exact value of Rn, when values of 10, 11, and 12 were taken from Doron, uh, Doron, Doron output. And, uh, but when, when the rest was calculated, right hand side column in simple Monte Carlo simulations based of M, M repetitions. And you can see that generally a Monte Carlo simulations give pretty accurate values for all these first values. It's very close to, to exact values. But when we continue Monte Carlo, uh, this number of repetitions going down a little bit because it's not to wait more than a few seconds. And then we're really going up toward one. And now what is remains, it's only to prove to prove, uh, uh, to prove the result. Now, we generally, uh, Noga alone refer us to the paper by, paper by Paul Erdos and Robin Wilson. In this paper, there is a lemma stating that almost all labeled graphs in, uh, in which pairs of vertices are, are joined by H with probability half, have unique vectors of maximum degree. So it's very similar problem. And we use, in some sense, we use idea of a proof by Erdos and Wilson to show, to, uh, to prove the result. And in general, what, what we did, we did following. The main result is following. Uh, if, we, if we look on the S star, which is maximum, of the of the scores of n players, and so each score, each score. Remember, each score s, each score s. It's sum of the excess n minus one excess. So it has binomial distribution with the n minus one 
n minus one trials in probability of success in each trial half. So if you're looking here on this T, Tn in simple expectation of the score plus some quantity x times standard deviation of the score. When this quantity x, it's about square root of two log n minus one. Now I'll explain you how this is coming. So generally first step in result, it's say, saying that probability that maximum score more than t. So generally maximum score, if you normalize it, it means takes out expectation divided by standard deviation in simple more than x. Going to one is n going to infinity. Now, uh, generally, this result already was proved in literature before by Peter Huber in Annals of Mathematical Statistics and the, by, the, by direct proof using the uh, inequalities. Now, in second part in this result, it says following. If, if w, uh, Wn, its number of order pairs of distinct uh, uh, vertices u and v such that uh, their score equals, and this score more than t, a probability is that wn more than zero going to zero as n going to infinity. In other words, in other words, a probability is that two players going to have the same score, which is above, above level t, is zero. So it's not going to come out that uh, so maximum score, maximum score going to be about level T, but probability that two or more people are going to have uh, the same score about, about this level T is zero. So it's not, therefore, uh, maximum is unique. Now, generally, uh, so this idea, this idea uh, 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 how to show uniqueness of maximum and the proof a uh, proof is simple using the um, large deviation for binomial distribution in some inequality. Now, I only will pro present the sketch of a proof, but it's going to be more or less hopefully clear how it's working. So if we, now I'm going to use, because first one, first part already was proved in the Huber, I will present a little bit different, a uh, different proof, but, uh, we, but we also, will do the work. So if we denote by yt uh, sum of indicators, the score of player j more than t, and t is exactly the same t right here, by, by using the, uh, so now remember, uh, sj is score of player j. Now, because ass assumption of symmetry, all SJ have the same distribution, binomial distribution. Therefore, expectation of Y, it's N times probability that one of them more than T. Now, now we can use the large deviation result type of failure volume one for the binomial distribution. And we obtain that expectation of YT is about of this level. Now, now a little bit harder uh, step is to prove that variance of yt less or equals in expect this expectation. And then we can bound probability that y equals to zero by this quantity. And simple by using Chebyshev inequality, we obtain upper bound and using this inequality, we show that upper bound going to zero with n. Therefore, in, by observing that maximum more than t is the same like yt more than zero, we obtain Huber, Huber result, which is one. Now, about second one, it's more or less, uh, again, work, but here it's we need to consider the joint distribution uh, of the scores. So I will recall that, uh, Wn is, is double sum of all v and u such that s u equals s v in more than t in indicator function of such event. And here a little bit 
harder work since we need to consider joint distribution of, of the scores and scores were dependent. But again, possible to play with the a condition. So we dependent each two scores dependent for only from one X, XIJ, XJI. So using law of total probability and a little bit playing with the tails of binomial distribution, we obtain the expectation of uh, WN has this level of log n minus one over pi square root two n, which is of course going to zero with n. And now simple by observing by observing the WN can be written in this way, which is more equals in the indicator function the WN more than zero, we prove in applying expectation to both sides of inequality, we prove the probability the WN more than zero less or equal some quantity is going to zero and it will obtain required, required proof. So it immediately implies the probability to with when n going to infinity in classical uh, regular round robin tournament, a probability to obtain unique maximum score is going to one with n. So this is more or less all, all related to this part. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have time for questions. Well, I have a question. Yes. This is a classical. Uh, do you know why uh, McMahon called it American tournament as opposed to? Uh, so I, I don't, I look on McMahon paper. Yeah. So now I don't, and now I don't show that I even knew about it, but maybe it's because chess tournament. Yeah. So speaking of chess, uh, can you extend it? Uh, and when you have a tie, like in chess, you can have ties. So uh, you have half a point. Uh, so does the same uh, thing works? And also so, in the World Cup, Cup soccer, uh, you either have three points if you win, and and each each, each team gets one point. So it's instead of a one a i plus a j, you have a a i cube plus a i j plus a j cube, and you can take an arbitrary a polynomial of two variables and, and do the same thing. So does your beautiful analysis uh, extend to this more general situation? So I need to think about it, but generally what happened with tires, our original paper with the John W. Moon exactly was about a round robin with tires because this is, I wrote him asking if it's, you know, if he know, if a uh, result is known and he said me that it's not, not Maybe not, and when it's come out, original result, a uh, distribution of extreme values of the scores was related to ties. So I uh, I can look, I don't know answer, but I'm happy to look also here what's going to happen. Yeah, I think it'd be an interesting project to extend this uh, to other possibilities. Well, instead of only one zero zero one, you get other possible outcomes. Yes, so that we have in original work, in original work, we, exactly, we have ties. So in, in the case of ties, we, we had um, what you said. So Xij, for example, plus Xjy equals to some constant value, say M, when it also can include the ties. So, so it's a general case. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. And by the way, John, John Moon was one of my greatest heroes. I was so happy that he's still active and alive. So, because has this a book, uh, Labor Trees, uh, Counting Labor Trees, is one of my favorites, and it got me started in Cometoics. So it was very nice uh, to see him. Have you met him in person? I only talk with him by phone. I never ah. met So, but I only talk by phone when we finish already the two papers. <laughs> Before it, it only was by, by, by email. Uh, Neil, do you know John Moon? Uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, Neil, are you here? Uh, no, he's in Canada. In the I know, I, no, I, I'm asking his loan if he 
if he knew John Moon, if he's still around. Uh, I, no, I don't. I, I simply did, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat, please, your question? My question was to Neil Sloan, but maybe he not doesn't listen. Uh, ah. whether he knows John Moon. I only met him once in a conference, and I really admire him. So it was very nice to see this paper with you. Yes, I sent him email uh, saying that uh, if he he can see the talk of uh, now or, or maybe after using your website. Yeah. That's very nice. Other questions or comments? Well, thanks for a great talk and happy Thank Thanksgiving you. and uh, see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank and you very Robert, much. And the talk. Okay. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you.